بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمد الله وصلي على رسول الكريم رب الشح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب I want to present to you two aspects of our deen on the one side it is absolutely fard fard al-ayn on me and you that we have to work to establish the khilafah we have to work to establish an islamic environment but there's one huge mistake that the islamic revivalists make when they're thinking about the establishment of the sharia and that is that they assume that once they establish the Sharia that all the problems will go away. This is not necessarily the case. Or that the, all the problems of the Ummah will go once we establish the Sharia. Unless two elements are not there, there have been many quote-unquote khilafas in the Muslim world. And majority of the times they have failed, the Muslims and the non-Muslims. They failed to show the beauty of Islam to the non-Muslims and they were unjust many times to the Muslims. It is not important what the structure is. As much, no matter what system you have in the world, if you have democracy, you have socialism, you have khilafah, you have any other nationalistic system, the structure important as the level of virtue of the people in it. If you have a democracy and it has vir virtuous people in it, which of course now whatever virtuousness there used to be at one time, it's all gone down the drain because that's the result of democracy and liberalism. But if you have people in a system and the people themselves are not virtuous, I ask you a question. Let's say there's a, a, a structure you're given the best system, the best structure, uh, the presidential system or the parliament. You just imagine some system that's the Islamic system. Let's say, let's say the uh, you know uh, that is a very good political system. The structure is very good. There's uh, checks and balances between the executive, the imara. You can say the amir and the judiciary, which is the qadi, and the uh, legislation or the parliament which is the shura you, let's say you have a very beautiful system all outlined and ready to go but you put all the worst people in it what will happen it won't work so you need two elements you need the structure that sharia gives you but more than that more than the structure you need the right type of people you need the right type of environment and what what is that environment and that environment is just not of only adal. It's not just an environment of justice, no. It has to be an environment of ihsan. So that if somebody comes and says, I did zina, and there is a possibility of a way out from that, they, per they act in accordance to that. If somebody said, I did zina, like this lady comes to the Prophet and said, I did zina. And the Prophet's like, you lost your mind. And the Prophet keeps rejecting her because there's only one witness. It was only when Abu Bakr came, now there are two witnesses. Now the, uh, the punishment has to be enforced. We have to have a governance that is based upon ihsan. We have to have governance that's based upon ihsan, number one. And number two, on top of that, you have to establish the Sharia. Both are, you can say, absolute musts. One will not benefit without the other. If you have the best structure, with not the good people, they're only people that want justice and not ihsan. They don't want to do things in a beautiful way in the, uh, with the mercy of the Prophet they want to. They don't want to express the mercy of the Prophet in their politics. Unless, you know, when we look at the history of the Muslims and the Khilafahs of the Umayyads and the Abbasids and the Saljuks and the Ottomans, what do we find? We find Khilafah is a failed project until and unless you have somebody like Salahuddin Ayyubi. Until and unless you have somebody like Nuruddin Zanqi. 
until and unless you have a person who is a man of justice, but also a man of mercy. Until you have people around you, like Omar bin Abdul Aziz, people that were in men of justice, but also men of mercy. Until you have the right type of people in that right structure, you will not have the benefits of the khilafah. And so this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah has promised those of you, the minkum is here emphasizing specifically amongst you. Those who have the true iman, just like Allah says, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Let there be a group, a jama'ah amongst you that works towards that khilafah, that works towards building the ummah internally. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ They enjoin the good. وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid the evil. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِينَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِينَ They're the people that are successful. If you have a khilafah, but the khalifa has no heart, the khalifa has no mercy, and his governors have no mercy, what good is that khilafah? Only that khilafah that has the structure and the implementation of the sharia. But with that you have people who are shadows of rahmatul lil alameen, the mercy of all. They're his shadows. They're following his sunnah. Only then that, ben that system will benefit the people. But if you have a khilafah in which the people don't have really a merciful heart, then what type of khilafah will that be? What type of message will that send to the non-Muslims? So it's very important that we understand that we don't only want khilafah. We want the right people to run that khilafah. It's not that just the Mahdi will establish justice. He, that he will establish the Sharia, but he will be a man of justice. He will be a man of mercy. He will bring many people to Islam by his conduct. Like Umar bin Abdul Aziz did. So it's very, very important that he has beauty in his character. He has mercy in his character. He's not looking for revenge. No. He's not looking for dominance. No. He's not looking to uh, express his power or his ego. No. He's looking to express virtue. He's looking to express what can be done. And that will sometimes come at the cost of the ego. Sometimes that will come at the cost. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. He's making a contract with the people of Mecca. That on the surface, first surface of it, what? <clears throat> on the surface of it is going against himself, first of all. He's signing a contract with people of Quraysh, that, uh, this, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, that apparently on the surface of it looked like it was going against the Prophet himself. And he signed that contract because he had ihsan. He did things in a beautiful way. He wasn't only looking for justice. He wasn't there just to say, oh, you know, you've done us wrong by not letting us do Umrah and, you know, we're going to go back with a grudge and one day we're going to come and get you and, you know, this is unjust that you're keeping us from. No. Yeah, the Prophet did everything in a beautiful way. The Prophet did everything with Ihsan. And our govern, we must establish a khilafah on the one side. And on the other side, we must cultivate the right type of environment and people to run that khilafah. If you only establish the khilafah, brute force, for example, through military or some, that's not going to bring the type of people that you need to run the khilafah. You have to create the right environment to create the right people and to create the people of mercy and to create people who don't just get angry and run on their anger and their emotions. No. You have to create the people like the Prophet ﷺ created. Umar bin, uh, Umar bin Khattab, people usually remember him as somebody who got angry, but he never got angry for himself. He never got angry for himself. He always got angry for the deen, for someone else. Never confuse that with the person who gets angry for himself. No. 
his wife and daughter thought that he's like a sheep in the house. Like he's, he's timid in the house. So anyway, the point being that we have to... Actually, there are three, there's a third dimension I'd like to add here. One is, there has to be a Jama'ah that works to establish the deen. And that would most likely not be in this nation-state situation. It will only be after these nation-states fall. Then the Muslims can start implementing Islam in a new way, in a, in, with the right type of people, with the right type of attitude. So on the one side, you need the implementation of the Khilafah. But for the implementation of the Khilafah, you must have a strong understanding of what is wrong with modernity, what is wrong with postmodernity. What is wrong with liberalism? And you must filter out these elements from that khilafah that you're going to implement. You must be able to understand what is money, what is currency. You must be able to understand what are the limits of technology. You must be able to, you cannot just say, okay, we're going to just change the rules. No gambling, no theft, and that's good too. But you just change the rules and everything else, the philosophical underpinnings still remain there. That's not going to give you the results that you want. So you must establish the Khilafah. And you must have the knowledge of what Khilafah is not and what it is. And you must be on guard that you're not copying the nation-state models. And then you must cultivate the people who don't are not fighting for themselves. They are a people of virtue. They're not they're not they're not doing it just for themselves or only for themselves no nope. their main purpose in life is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would rather give up the seat they would rather give up the seat of their khilafah than to displease Allah or they would rather give up the seat of the khilafah if there is some benefit to the ummah that comes from that Uthman radiallahu an was the Khalifa with the largest land under his feet. And had it not been for the Prophet وسلم, telling him that people will try to take off your clothes, don't let them take it off. Had it not been for that statement, Uthman would have stepped down. So <clears throat> you need somebody to be the leader. And you need to cultivate that type of leadership where you don't see yourself as special. I'm the Khalifa, therefore I'm special. No. I am, as one Orientalist put it, that how when they came to see Umar bin Khattab, the Orient, the, the non-Muslims when they came to see Umar bin Khattab, how they saw the Umar bin Khattab with his companions around him, he was the leader among the equals. He was the leader amongst the equals. Actually, the word that they used was the king amongst equals. I mean, they're all like kings, and Umar is taking everything by consultation. Everything by consultation. Everything Umar did, Abu Bakr did, Uthman did, Ali did, Hassan did. Everything was by mutual consultation. And so until you have a people who, if they're told, look, you can't be the Khalifa anymore. You need to step down. The person will have no problem stepping down. Until you don't have those types of people, you cannot be a proper, cannot have a proper representation of Khilafah. You need the structure. You need the implementation of the Sharia. But if you give the implementation of the Sharia in the wrong hands, if you give the implementation of the Sharia in the wrong hands, then instead of showing Islam as something good, it's going to show something as and that will make people run away from Islam. Especially if you don't have a proper in interpretation, which is what we're trying to do here. It, especially if you don't have a proper interpretation of what Khilafah is. And how you will deal with people in that society. Are you going to deal with them harshly? Are you going to deal with them with mercy? Are you going to deal with them how? So it is very important that, uh, you know, and, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself. Allah has written mercy over himself. So this is uh, Allah's, Allah's mercy, right? Not his justice. Allah's mercy is what prevails. Allah's mercy is what prevails. 
And then if the Khalifa is representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen, then it is the mercy that has to prevail. And like this with the governors and, the, and then the family members and the father and the husband and so on and so forth and the mother and the children and the older brother to the younger brother. This congruency has to take place. But it can only take place if you have the Khilafah, but you have the, not the right structure only. We must have the right people. And therefore you must cultivate the right people. Okay, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.